Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking our first look at uh, a Z77 board. Now I have to be very careful about what I can say um, because a lot of these products are still under NDA. No matter whether any other sites have le leaked anything or anything like that, I've signed documents with Intel so um, I cannot and will not jeopardise my relationship with them so I have to be very careful about like I said what I say and what we really talk about. But the first board that we're going to be looking at is a board that I've um, been eagerly anticipating to be honest with you and that's the Gigabyte Z77X UD5H and as far as I'm aware at this present moment in time the UD5 is going to be the top of the range for the Gigabyte um, Z77 boards um, because they're, they've had a slight restructure with some of the naming and stuff and they're going to have quite a few UD3s but the UD5 is now going to be the top of the range so flicking things over uh, just to have a look um, all digital power that we've got on these so that's uh, always a good thing um, 3D BIOS on this, we've, uh, I will show you uh, this at a later date when we actually get to test it and stuff but there is a, like a graphical in interface with the BIOS which if I bring it in you can kind of see there that motherboard I've a I have actually seen this working and you can pretty much just use your mouse to go over it and select which part of the, uh, say for instance, you want to change the RAM settings you go up to the dim slots, click that and then you can make your settings changes there is still the, the old school kind of style layout BIOS as well, should you want to use it. It's what they call like the expert area. Um, so that's all in there. We've also got on there Intel Smart Response where you can use an SSD f to cache your hard drive to make things a bit quicker. There's also the MSATA connector which is like a really tiny, almost like a mini PCI Express type of, the sort of size that you'd expect like a Wi-Fi card in your laptop. Anyway, you, you can get those now as uh, cache drives that you and they've got the connector to clip them on the motherboard um, so you don't even necessarily need to take up a uh, SATA slot at the back or anything up like that with it or have a, you know, a big drive. You can get one of these, clip it in, bosh, it caches your hard drive up. Um, it's got Gigabyte Dual uh, Gigabit LAN, it's got um, XFi on board, don't know whether that's an XFi chip yet or whether it's just uh, software, we'll have a look when we get inside. Um, dual Gigabit LAN, that's going to be good for uh, power users really, people that have got servers and all that kind of stuff, they might find that a bit better. Um, it's got humidity protection, electrostatic protection. Um, th temperature protection, power failure protection. Um, it's got a, obviously still got the two times copper PCB, but it's also got what they're calling their new glass fiber fabric PCB as well. All stuff that we're going to have to get to look at at a later date in depth when we do the full review. But I'm going to open the box. This I'll do it all in front of you. Um, I'm not sure whether this is going to be a full retail sample yet. But we open the box, we'll have a look at what I've got inside. And in here I've got a, an SLI bridge, normal SLI bridge. Um, we've got four total SATA connectors, the back plate, uh, there's a, uh, the manual with the driver CD inside, and then we've also got uh, a three and a half inch adapter. Uh, so it's a three and a half inch bay with two USB 3s on it and then an internal USB 3 header as well. So for anyone out there that's not got a USB 3 case, that will be pretty handy for you. But then we get our first look at the motherboard while there's a courier outside coming to bring me more goodies. Right, so first look at the board. What I'm going to do is uh, I will walk you round it. Now, um, like I said, this, there's a few things I can point out. Obviously we've got dual channel memory and then we've got the, a power switch up here and a reset switch and then a PCI um, fault finder here. We've, got, uh, we've actually got a um, SATA connector here to put power, extra power into the board and then there's a PCI, not PCI Express, there's a USB 3 internal header here um, there's a we have got there's a panel switch here. I honestly don't know what that is yet, so that'll be quite interesting um, to see. 
Uh, but we've got there we've got uh, G SATA 3 and they're saying that's port 8 but we've got uh, lots of SATA connectors around here I can't really say too much but the colours do kind of correlate it, it's kind of a little um, an insight let's put it that way now I'm just kind of looking around the board because I'm looking at this at the same time as you but there's that um, the uh, M SATA connector there and then we've obviously got a, a full size PCI Express slot there there and there there is a um, uh, PCI slot here although the the oh I can't really say too much about that so I have to go real careful then we've got PCI 1 1 and 1 there um, right fan connectors there's one there one there so two three four five that's it onboard fan connectors there's five they are all pwm compatible but obviously you can use normal ones with that as well uh, there's a cmos switch at the top as well as the reset switch um, yeah i'm just kind of looking around trying to see things that i can tell you you know without getting myself into trouble but we've got the usb slot here and the the red donates the fact that this is the the charging port as well but there's another USB there and then we obviously got front panel um, 1366 around the back of the board we have if I change my grip around the back of the board we have uh, VGA DVI then we've got optical out then there's uh, HDMI and then display port USB 2 USB 2 firewire USB 2 2 gigabit Ethernet four USB 3s and then the onboard audio but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a slow look round don't forget you can pause the video at any moment in time that you want and I'll move you slowly round trying to do my best with the board and the camera Give you a quick look around the back of the board as well. So, there we go, guys and girlies. Um, like I said, I have to be kind of pretty protective about what I say because I don't want to get myself into trouble. Um, obviously, we will be doing full reviews of these and many other boards at a later date. We just wanted to give you a quick look around. Um, my first thoughts are I quite like the uh, the blue heatsink. So although it's quite an aggressive design heatsink, uh, there we go. Although it is quite an aggressive design, it actually the only way I can explain it is it does still feel kind of smooth. If that makes any sense, it's not kind of a real mega chunky look to it. Um, as far as I'm aware, most of the ATX boards that they're going to be doing, so full size ATX boards, are going to have these M SATA ports. Uh, that's obviously a good thing if you're going to use it, but I think it might be nice if they give us like a like a black cover or something that you could put in there if you weren't going to use it, or something to clip over the top so it's a little bit less obvious. I suppose once you've got a heat sink on there or something, it might not be too bad. Um, plenty of SATA ports, which is always nice. Um, I'm unsure at this present moment in time what the extra power is for, the extra like the SATA power connector. I'm assuming the SATA power connector is for when you're using the charging side of things, so that you've uh, that's where the power comes from to like charge your iPod and your iPhone and stuff like that. So that's what I'm assuming that is, but I don't know 100%. Um, obviously, uh, on the board, power and reset and stuff will be good for the benches, but it's also good for those of you out there that test and stuff as well. Plenty of onboard uh, video connectors at the back. Um, well, every one that you could possibly want, really. Um, looking now, I'm just looking to see if there is an X5 chip, and there's, as uh, far as I can see, there's not. In fact, I can see there that we've got uh, an AL, 
ALC894, I think it might be. I can't really see it. My eyes aren't that great. Uh, chip there so the the XVI is software based and not hardware based but that's the way most uh, companies have done it anyway uh, Gigabyte did do an, an XVI chip on the board once but it was on one of their really really high-end gaming boards one thing I didn't know uh, say notice or mention is the fact that we've got a onboard USB 3 here but there's also two more at the bottom so there's a total of three so that's actually quite massive I've only just noticed though, so that's quite a, something I could have missed. That could have been quite bad. Um, but other than that, plenty, plenty of power phases around the, the CPU area. I mean, if I get it right so that you can actually see, have a look around there and around there. You can see there's loads of power phases there. Um, power phases are good for overclocking, just in case you wondered. Um, with the uh, Sandy Bridge stuff, some of the uh, really high-end um, boards that had lots of power phases could take the exact same CPU that little bit higher just because the power was a lot cleaner because um, of the power phases. And it's one of the reasons why I would favour a higher-end board than a lower-end board if you're going for those you know, big 24-7 stable overclocks with decent volts. I'd always buy a, uh, try and buy the best board that you can. But other than that, guys, this is our first look at the Gigabyte Z77 UD5. So what do you think? Is this something that you could possibly be looking at buying when everything gets released? Um, so, yeah, what do you think? So, with the first of our um, Z77 first looks, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.